And <laughs> so, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good night, good afternoon, whatever time this message reaches you. I pray that you know that you are blessed and that you're loved. And as a child of God, know that God is with you. He never leaves, nor does he forsake you. This morning's title is Adonai Li Loira. Adonai Li Loira. And it simply means, God is with me, I shall not fear. God is with me, I shall not fear. Hallelujah, glory to God. Praise your name, hold on a second. Praise the name, O oh Lord. We thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, the Lord is good and He's greatly to be praised. Come on, this is our day that the Lord has made. We're rejoicing in it because God is in it with us. He never leaves nor does He forsake us. Hallelujah, glory to God. So I just read a blessing. Hallelujah. I just spoke a blessing. Praise the Lord. And now let me read the word of God. And we know reading, hearing, and applying the word of God, we're blessed. Uh, Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Indeed, I will help thee. Indeed, I will uphold thee with my right, righteous right hand. The thing is, Eloeka is with us. He never leaves, nor does he forsake us. You know, so many times we speak certain ways, but we ought to know that we know that we know that God is with us. He never leaves us, nor does he forsake us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. God is amazing. God is awesome. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who are on, good morning. Sister Danette, good morning. Uh, Reverend Lee, Reverend Love, and all those who will come on. Apostle Ingrid. You know, I won't call name, but all those who will come on, whether you're on now or you're on later, to God be the glory. Amen. We must not fear. It's not a good thing. To fear. Fear or Yira in Hebrew. So, uh, by the way, Adonai Li Lo Yira is Hebrew, right? It's, it's just, it's a blessing. Okay? It's a prayer, actually. The word Yira is what fear is. Now, fear is is the emotion that triggers chemical changes in our brains and in our bodies which prepares us to do what to fight to flee or to freeze at perceived or real danger the problem is most times we do all of us well no I've been there I've done it Oh, the perceived fear, and I'm ready. It's, it's like, what? Okay? And what do most of us do? Some people are runners. The moment they perceive something is not, they perceive the, what? The perceived fear, the anticipated thing. The moment they anticipate something, they take off running. But what are you running from, and where are you running to? Because the place you go, you're going to flee again. When the next set of whatever you think is coming your way. We saw, when you read the Bible, that Elijah ran from Jezebel. Now, she was a perceived fear. Because if God gave him the wherewithal, God gave him the strength, God gave him the power, God gave him the strength and power, huh, to fight. He didn't just kill 450 prophets. It was more like 850. There were others. Didn't read the word. There were her personal prophets. And he killed them all. Yet, 
at the threat she sent to him. What was that? The anticipated, huh? the fear that he felt, it caused them to flee. And what did God say to him? What are you doing there? Oh, Elijah, what are you doing there? This morning, God is saying to some of you, what are you doing there? Some of you are runners. The moment you perceive. But sons and daughters of God, I want you to listen to this message. This is like really a teaching message. This is a, it's going to help you. It's, it's here to help all of us. Not to fight not to flee and not to freeze in the face of perceived danger. Huh? Because the moment we anticipate danger, and I'm not, there is real danger. That's different. We're talking about the ones that we just imagine in our minds and we run with it. The ones that take us on the rabbit trail and down the rabbit hole. Huh? The one that takes us, plunges us into depression or into panic anxiety attacks. The one that stresses us out and causes us to worry and separates us from God. See, the problem is to fight against perceived or anticipated danger is futile and it's also exhausting. And it accomplishes what? Nothing. For we read in 1 Corinthians 9 and 26 where Paul says, So I run with purpose in every step. I am not shadow boxing. I am not boxing against the air. What are you fighting? When you perceive danger and you start to fight, you are fighting against what you can't see. So what are you really fighting? You're only going to exhaust yourself. Frustrate yourself, tire yourself out, and then you're going to plunge where the enemy of your soul wants you to plunge. To flee from perceived or anticipated danger stops you from fulfilling your purpose and your destiny. You see, when you keep running from place to place, there's a saying, a never settling person never succeeds. You can't keep running from place to place. Proverbs 28 and 1. Let me tell you something. If you're a runner, listen to what the Proverbs say. Proverbs 28 and 1. Hear this clearly. The wicked flee when no man pursueth him, but the righteous are bold as a lion. When you're running, and there's nothing chasing you. It's not a good thing, sons and daughters of God. It's really evil. We've got to put all our trust and confidence in God. Now, to freeze in the face of perceived or anticipated danger is to throw in the towel. Is to not try is to do nothing. This robs you of your reward and causes great loss. Sons and daughters of God, this is a serious matter. You think about it. For the fighters who are fighting nothing, for the fleers who are fleeing from nothing, and for the freezers who are freezing because of perceived or anticipated danger. And I've given you scripture. See, God addresses every single thing that concerns us. He does not want us to be defeated. He does not want any of us to be lost. Hell was not made for any of us. Defeat is not for us. Because Jesus already has given us the victory. And so, let me read to you Matthew 25, 24 through 27 and 29 through 30. Don't know why I did this. But anyway, then the servant with one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew how harsh a, a man harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. 
He froze. He did nothing. Fear paralyzed him. When fear paralyzes you, you will do nothing. You know my first book? I wrote on my back. I was sick. My kids, my husband would move the laptop from off my lap because I'd simply fall asleep after literally like writing maybe uh, uh, sometimes a few sentences or whatever. That book, book was published when I was in, in the hospital. That was Divine Revelations, Eye Openers. There were days when, seriously, I was, I, I, I felt like, ooh, I'm gonna die. Let me just, but you know what? I kept, I kept pushing forward. I was like, God, as long as you give me the strength, you said to do this book, so I'm going to do this book. You said it's going to be published, so it's going to be published. Because I cannot tell you the amount of time the enemy of my soul wanted me to give it, give up. I sent in that book and forgot about it. Because as I said, I was very ill, went to the hospital, spent a, a month, spent two months in rehab. I came out and realized the book had been published. Had I given up though, had I frozen I would never have done it. I've never have completed it. So we have to know that we've got to move on. Our God is greater. But come with me. Let me continue reading. But master, but the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops, I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate. Why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. You see, to those who use well what they're given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, go read it for yourself, the entire thing, because it tells you the master had given out different uh, uh, allotments of, of monies to his servants for them to do with it while he was absent. The others went forth. Do you think fear did not come to them? Yeah, but they, they proceeded because they knew it was a harsh master. And so this one who buried it, he froze. When we freeze, we produce nothing. And so to perceive our irrational fear is dangerous. Even more so to a child of God. Why is that so, you may ask? Well, let's go. A rabbinic sage once wrote, If a man has fear of anything except the Creator, he is in some degree an idolater. For to fear is to offer worship to the thing feared. Do you hear me? To fear is to offer worship to the thing feared. My God, what are you fearing? Now, you have a fear of dogs. Not saying it's irrational, because if you've been bitten by a dog, you know, my grandmother used to say, if you're bitten by a snake, you see a lizard, you're going to what? Run. But the thing is, if you live your life in constant fear of, fear of dogs, you see tiny dogs, dogs on leash, dogs on the other side of the road, dogs down the block, and you still have that fear, then in essence, what it's saying is, your worship goes to the thing you fear. It's an irrational fear. Now, if you see a, a dog unleashed, I would say stand your ground. By the way, if you have a fear of dogs, never run. Never run. Stand still. Let their masters take them. Just just stand your back, back up, but don't run. You can put yourself in some potential danger. That, that That's a little, it's on the side, but it's part of the message now. Glory to God. So, 
See, the, but the thing is, he continues, and this form of worship may only be offered to the Lord. Now, what does Proverbs 29 and 25 says? Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. We ought to fear God and God alone. Now, the fear of God is not an irrational fear. It's a reverential fear. It's knowing who God is. It's knowing that he's omnipotent, that he's omniscient, that he's omnipresent. It's knowing that God Almighty created the heaven and earth, the creator of our lives and our family's lives and the entire earth. That creator God has the power to change things for us, has the power to see us through things, bring us to the other side better. So, you see, if God is for us, if God is with us, if God is within us, what then should we fear? Is God not omnipotent? Does, is his power not over all power of the enemy? By the way, what I read before was from Matthew 25, in case I did not say. So, listen. Is our trust really in God when we give in to our fears? We fear flying. We fear driving. We fear climbing. We fear everything. We fear spiders. We fear flies. We fear, and like I said, if you have a fear of snakes, not so irrational. Still there are folks who will handle the snakes. But we know snakes, what will they do? Bite you. And when they bite, what do they have? Venom, a poison that can kill, can maim, or harm, will harm, or maim, or kill, right? However, we have to know that our trust, our belief is in God Almighty, the one and true Ekad, the one and true and only real God. You see, there are more than enough problems in each day to cause us worry, fear, panic, anxiousness or anxiety, or stress. There's more than enough fears, more than enough problems. But what did Jesus say? Take no thought in our lives, sons and daughters of God. There are personal issues. Job issues, money issues, legal issues, married marriage issues, health issues, family issues, private life issues, governmental issues, community issues, safety issues, national issues, global issues. On any given day, there will be some issue or another for someone or some ones, as I like to say. It's not proper speech, but you know what I mean by that, don't you? Yes, you do. You see, evil has reared its ugly head and lives and, and lives today are in upheaval. But God, you see, we keep going from year to year, expecting the year to change. The year is not responsible sons and daughters of God. Believe it or not, we are. The Bible says the earth is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. That means we're playing a part in what we are facing, in what we're dealing with. We know that the enemy of our soul comes against us, and that's a given. However, what part do we play? We speak words we ought not to. We speak the devil's language by telling lies, being deceptive, not trusting and believing God. 
instead of speaking the word of God. Jesus said, the words I speak belong to my Father. Is God our heavenly Abba or not? Are we joint heirs with Christ or not? So ought we not to speak God's language? You know, if we're culturally... That, well, I was born in Cuba, right? So my first language was Spanish. And I did speak Spanish fluently at one point. I was trans... I was brought to another country. And I stopped speaking for a whole year. When I started speaking... I spoke English. I say that to say, what is our original language? Are it not, we, we speak, if we're born in France or, or wherever in the world we're born, whatever language is spoken in the area that we're born, that's what we speak. When we move to a, a, a country or a place that no longer speaks our language, what happens? We learn that language, don't we? Yes, we do. When my cousin migrated here from, from Cuba as well, she migrated as an adult, and we went to the same college. She had to learn to speak English. It wasn't a difficulty for me at that point because I had already learned English as a, a toddler, right? But for her, but she learned English. Now, we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We used to speak the enemy's language. But today, what should we speak? Those of us who belong to the kingdom of God. Shouldn't we speak the language of heaven? We should be speaking God's words. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We should be speaking God's words. My God. Thank you, Jesus. So, Jesus, as I said before, said, take no thought. He said, Altira, do not fear. I am with you. Either we believe Jesus or we don't. Believing in something or someone takes action, sons and daughters of God. We cannot say we believe something and not put action to it. Then we're liars. It means we don't believe God. God is trying to help us, sons and daughters of God. You ever had, you know, I remember this girl, <laughs> she said, this, was this in 2020? She said, um, yeah, her business had started to flourish. She said, when she started her business, her family, her friends, her best friends, they were like, yes, girl, go ahead. I'm going to support you. She said, when she started her business, not one of them supported her. Nobody bought anything from her. None of them. Right? Anyway, she met someone and she was talking to the person. God has a way. When you're a believer too, God will help you. She said they would come. They would take her product. They would try it. They would say, girl, this is good. Never purchase though. And you do have people like that. Who, who they'll say, oh, I support you, but they don't. And people have to get real. So she said, you know what? Okay. Now, even family, she said, and she moved on. That person assisted her, got her promotions, you know, helped her to promote her products. And so she was a booming business. And this was during the pandemic. And do you know now her family was still... Oh, everybody say, oh, that's my friend and that's my... But they still wouldn't support her. Now they expected her to turn around and support them. But you know, the Bible tells you about that. It says, do not take the things of people and not pay them. It's in the Word. I don't remember where it is, but when I find it, I will surely post it on my Facebook page. It wasn't part of the message, but it is now. 
the thing is, when we say something, action ought to follow it. You can't say you love someone and not show them you love them, or your action belies what your lips say to them. Unless you do not understand what the word means. If you do not understand what it means to believe God, then clearly you cannot believe him. If you don't understand what the meaning of trust, then clearly you can't trust God. But if we're saying things that we don't know the meaning of or we don't understand and we need to go, look it up and see whether our actions are following our words. Whatever our heart's filled with, it's going to come out. Whatever is in our thoughts, our actions are going to follow. Just saying. I know last week was a rough week for many of us. But God has brought us through. And thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This week is a rough week for many. But the same omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God that took all of us through last week will simply take us through this week as well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, God has all power. The power to change things. The power to rearrange things. And the power to sustain his sons and his, daughter, his daughters through situations, trials, circumstances, whatever may come one's way. In Matthew, you see, no, I want to tell you about Peter. Everybody has, we have to admit, Peter was impetuous, right? Peter was the guy who, who, who spoke before he thought. Have you been there? Yeah, like, yeah, man, I'm in. And then you go, wait, um, what am I in for? Um, what did I say yes to? You know, some people love to say yes, so they'll say yes. Oh, whatever, whatever. Yeah, man, I'm in. Or yes, I'll be there. Sure. And then we say, wait, what? Where am I going? Um, what am I sanctioning? What am I being a part of? Right? So Peter was the impetuous guy. Now Peter could have froze when he saw Jesus. Because remember the Bible tells us they thought it was an apparition or a ghost. Uh, Bible. Read it for yourself. Uh, you can read it in the book of Matthew. They saw Jesus walking on the water and they thought it was a ghost. Well Peter was like, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus said, Bow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on a second. Oh, oh wow. All right. Thank you, Jesus. I will address that soon. Yeah, so, Peter, in, in his impetuousness, he's like, listen, he could have froze, but his lips spoke when Jesus said, bow. He, 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 he just stepped out. So he did the impossible instead of freezing. See, had he frozen and stayed in the boat, had he cowered in fear, he would not have achieved the impossible, which was to walk on water with Christ Jesus. Now, there came a time when he actually did freeze because he looked. Instead, he took his eyes off Jesus and he looked. He looked at, he was like, whoa, whoa. And, 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 and he was going down. But Jesus, huh? And so, what did Jesus say to them when they thought, is it you before the Lord told them to come? Immediately, the word of God said that Yeshua, the Melech HaMashiach, he said, Azak, Anihu. Do not be afraid. I am He. Oh, so many times when the angels of angel of the Lord would visit anyone, uh, 
be not afraid. Listen, he could have frozen, couldn't he? He could have frozen. Moses could have ran away from the burning bush, but he ran to the burning bush. In Luke 1, 26 through 38, we see the angel Gabriel visiting Mary and telling her that she was going to give birth to the Son of God. And though she was fearful or apprehensive at first, uh, at the visitation, she was perplexed by the assignment, uh, cause here the angel visited with her and then told her, hey, now she was engaged to Joseph. And the angel said, you're going to have the son of the living God. She was wondering, well, how's this going to happen? And the angel Gabriel said, Holy Spirit will do it. Now she could have fought with him like Jacob wrestled with the angel, couldn't she? She could have ran or she could have frozen and said nothing, right? Instead, she conversed with him and simply said, Hey, me, behold, listen, she's like, wait, I am Shifta, Shifka. She's like, I am the handmaiden of Hashem. I am the handmaiden of God. This is what she said, right? In other words, she used that word meaning not only is she the handmaiden, she is selected by God to carry his son. She said, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. That's Luke 1 and 38. Do you see how we're supposed to live? We're supposed to live, move, and have our being in Christ, guided by the Spirit of the living God, trusting in a God, our Creator, who is also our Heavenly Abba, the one who, to whom we belong. Instead, our actions belie that every time. We see how Mary reacted, responded. You see, Mary had a healthy fear of God. The kind of fear that makes us wise. This is reverential fear. And reverential fear helps us to lean not to our flesh, but into the omniscience of God. Into the all-knowing love of God. Jesus has already defeated the things that we fear. And as Reverend Lee always says, why fear that which is already defeated? Listen, it is unwise to fear the thing that is already defeated. Now, I don't, the, you know, like, if you are afraid of snakes and lizards, neither one of them I like at all. But listen, if the snake is dead and you know it's dead, would you fear it? I mean, someone shows you that the head has been crushed, the tail is crushed, nothing is moving. Someone takes a stick and flick it over and it doesn't move. They set fire and no movement. Would you fear it still? It's dead. So many times we find ourselves fearing what God, our heavenly Abba, through his son Jesus, has already defeated. As I said before, God and only God is to be worshipped. It is really, really unwise and senseless to fear the thing that is defeated, to give worship to something that is defeated. In Proverbs 9 and 10, we read, 
fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Other translation says the beginning, right? Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, sons and daughters of God. This is how we become wise, which is the reverential fear of God. To know, to know, to know. See, we are wise when we, we, we begin to know how truly awesome God is. He is El Anora, the awesome God. The one to whom we have, uh, you know, we, we, a lot of folks use the word awesome for everything. Oh man, he kicked the ball into the goal. Awesome. Who are we worshiping? The people? The action? But we choose not to give worship to the only one who's deserving of our worship. These are not the days, sons and daughters of God, for us to walk in fear. These are not the days for us to walk in the irrational fear. The only fear we should be walking in is the reverential fear of God. Because walking in irrational fear will cause us to end up in the pit Revelation 21 and 8. And I want you to hear me clearly this morning. I want you to go back and listen to this message over and over again. Revel Revelation 21 and 8 reads, But the fearful, you know, years ago, <laughs> let me tell you something. Like I said, I've been through some things, but I'm the person. See, when I read certain things in the Bible, listen, my, my, the, you know, I'm like that child. When my grandmother would say, uh, y'all yeah, break up your fallow ground. You know, when you're playing the fool. And she says, break up your fallow ground. Listen, I'm good. Because, yeah, I don't like spanking. There's some people who they'll take the spanking and they'll go back and do the thing and go back until eventually, you know, you know. We've seen it. But God. The Bible says, but the fearful. So you can read what came before the but. But the first one is fearful. Sons and daughters of God. I don't know about you. And, and in the Hebrew, it says the coward. Yes, it says the coward. Oh my Lord. When we're fearful, we're being cowards. It says the fearful, the first one. You know, I thought for sure it would say the murderer, the 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 fornicator, whatever. That not even that. I was like thinking of more serious. The the Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving. I was like, no, Lord, please tell me you didn't say the fearful and the unbelieving. Now you see why I had to straighten up and fly right. Oh, a walk right, I should say. Well, fly right, walk right, talk right, live right. Come on. And the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, oh my Lord, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Sons and daughters of God. Hell wasn't made for any of us. Mm -mm. I purposed in my heart. I read that I was like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Now, do you see why we ought not to live afraid? Now, we have healthy fear in Yerat Adonai. We have the healthy fear of God. See, to have the Yerat Adonai, we must get to know 
him. Draw closer to him, God. We must get to know God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. We must receive his love. We must love him. Walk in his ways. And be obedient to him. Serve him with all our hearts and souls. Sons and daughters of God. When we fear God. To fear God is to eradicate the other fears out of our lives. Having reverential fear for God, He removes what the Bible says. He delivers us out of all, all, all means all, all of our fears. Just like when the Bible just said all liars, it's the gaslighters, it's the deceivers, it's the little white liars, it's the, it's the, it's the twisted truthers, it's the, yeah man, no man, you know that kind of a, oh, I didn't really mean that. When the Bible says all, it means all, all encompasses every single thing. All is all. So he will deliver us out of all fear of heights, fear of flights, fear of spiders, fear of flies, fear of whatever it is, fear of marriage. There are people who are afraid to be married. There are people who are afraid to be alone. All the fears, every single fear. So what are you doing with your fear? Run to the Lord. When you go to him and you start acknowledging him for who he is, that he is the Lord of your life. And truly let him be Lord of your life. And not... Hallelujah, glory to God. So, listen, when we serve him, with all our hearts and souls. It means we're saying, Lord, you are Lord of my life, King of my heart. I serve you now. You're seated on the throne of my heart. Fill my heart with you, all of you. We'll not lean to our own understanding in whatever we speak, whatever we eat, whatever we do, wherever we go. We'll make no decision without him. I know we love to say we're independent. I'm grown. I'm 18. I'm grown. Listen. I don't, you know. But I don't care what age we are. We need God every step of the way. In this season, now more than ever. And so, in doing so, we'll be long livers, you can read Proverbs 10 and 27. Oh, thank you. Apostle Ingrid just wrote, The fear, fear does not belong to us. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Oh, yes, I forgot about that one, sis. Thank you. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, what? God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, His power, His love, and sound mind. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. So, listen, where we have reverential fear of God, the fear of the Lord, look what the fear of the Lord does. It helps us to become long livers. That's what's written in Proverbs 10 and 27. So you could take these down and go back and read it for yourself. Proverbs 10 and 27. Also, that we become incompatible to evil. Did you know you can become incompatible to evil? Read Job 28 and verse 28. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will be taught of God. Okay? I, I can write these in afterwards. We'll be taught of God. Psalm 25 and 12. Wow, you know, now I, I, from last week, I've been seeing some of the comments. 
you know, I never used to see anybody, but I see that Danette, you're on an apostle. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, amen. Anyway, now, also, we'll have friendship with God. Don't you want to be a friend of God? Moses was a friend of God. Oh, God liked David. Oh, I want God to like me. He loves all of us. But to be liked by God, yes, I want to be liked by God. I don't know about you. But praise Jesus. I want to be liked by God. Mm -hmm. Yes. So read, read Psalm 25 and 14. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, we will receive abundant goodness. Read Psalm 31 and 19. Hallelujah. Don't you want to receive the abundant goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Come on, sons and daughters of God. Uh, we will be bold and very confident. Now, here's a way to get over your fear. The Bible tells us when we fear God, we become bold and very confident. Yeah, read it for yourself. I'm just, I'm just, you know, summarizing it. But it is beautiful to read the scripture for yourself. You'll get even more out of it. Um, so you will read that in Proverbs 14 and 26. Um, you'll receive angelic protection. Read Psalm 34 and 7. We'll become, we'll become rich, honorable, and full of life. Proverbs 22 and 4. Sons and daughters of God, read the word of God and believe God. Sons and daughters, listen, too many of us are speaking the enemy's language. The language of the enemy of our soul rather than the language of God. But if we stay in the word, if we read the word, if we sleep the word, meditate on the word of God, we already have the victory. But we're not claiming it. Instead, we take ourselves out of vic vic victory land and we cross on over into the place of defeat. It's time to stop that in the name of Jesus. So, also, we'll have our desires fulfilled. Read Psalm 145 and 19. Thank you, Danette, for putting up the scriptures. Now, knowing all this, knowing that the fear of the Lord eradicates all fears and blesses us so abundantly everything we need begins once we have that reverential fear of God and you know we can tell how we don't have it when we continue to lie when we continue to cheat each other when we continue to be jealous of each other when we continue to be strifeful when we continue to be unforgiving when we continue to want to control everybody else when we continue to live trifling lives listen we do not have reverential fear of God we don't. If we're not seeing the blessings of God, because the words of God will not lie. The Bible tells us not one word, not one word, not one jot, not one tittle. So if we're not seeing the blessings of God in our lives, if we're not living it, it means we do not have reverential fear. We have to be honest with ourselves. If we don't want to be honest with people, we have to be honest with ourselves and God. But when we practice deception, the Bible says we are ourselves deceived. So we need God to remove the scales from our eyes. And whatever binds our heart, we need hearts of flesh instead of hearts of stone, sons and daughters of God. May he open the eyes of our understanding that our hearts can receive him. His truth and His love. And we can be able to live it with the aid of the Holy Spirit of God. So, knowing the fear of God. Living in the fear of God. There's no reason to fear sons and daughters of God. Living in the presence of God. No reason to fear. Not, none at all. So, I pray that this will be a part of your daily prayer. Danette, Apostle, Reverend Lee, Reverend Love. By the way, congratulations, Reverend Love, on the birth of your, your, your latest 
new addition, the new your new granddaughter. You know, Reverend Love has had five mighty men of valor, and 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 many of them were having sons. Finally, she's having some women into the mix because she was a one woman in a household of six men, but now there are women being added. Glory to God! So we can we thank God, we praise God for safe deliveries and healthy babies. And, and for new addition, for growth. Ah, hallelujah. He's a God of growth. So, and I pray, as I said before, Crystal, my children, my husband, all those who watch this video, Bishop, everyone on LOR radio and all the radio station, all, all, all my pastor friends and all my Jewish friends and all my friends, I pray that this Adonai Li Lo Ira will become a part of your daily prayer. It's simple. Adonai Li Lo Ira. That's all you need to do. Adonai Li Lo Ira. God is with me. I shall not fear. And when you trust that the God that created you and I is with you as he is with me as he's with our loved ones, then we start to have reverential fear. And all our fears, our irrational fears, will slowly but surely dissipate. They will be eradicated totally and completely because God does nothing halfway, but he does it completely. Some things he does instantaneously, some things it's little by little. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. The more we grow in the Lord, we go from glory to glory. Growth is what it's all about. So I pray today that this be your prayer. Adonai li loira. Have a blessed and wonderful day, everyone. Know that I do love you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit loves all of us so much more. Be blessed. Go for it. Praise God. Trust God. Live God, live close to Him, live in Christ, and allow the Spirit of God to guide you. Lean not to your own understanding. May none of us lean to our own understanding. In all our ways, may we acknowledge God so that He can direct us in the, His path of life and light. In Jesus' name and for His sake, amen. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you, guys, for... for and congratulations, Danette! On a, oh, guys, um, you can pre-order your book, get a signed copy. The next book is ready for um, publication, so order your book now. It will be out uh, beautifully broken now. Beautifully blessed. She is beautifully blessed. You know, Danette has come a long way. Let me tell you something. Anyway, it's her testimony. I'm going to interview her. So I'll let you wait for the interview, okay? Get the book. Get the book. Get the book. Um, um, you can uh, get her information on her page. You can go to Danette's page or you can messenger her, you know, um, or I've posted it on my page. So I'm going to post also you can find the information there. All right. So enjoy and also my book is out as well as for the days of trees so am i it's a very empowering book these books will help you to anyway i'm just gonna say if listen you can bring the horse to the water you can't force the horse to drink not calling anybody a horse we can provide the food or the reading material for you to be empowered but we cannot force you to read it but for those who are wise enough to want to change. You know something? Change occurs with or without our consent. However, for it to become a part of our lives, to benefit us, we have to acknowledge, listen, I need change. You know that. We know this. The, the times I was living in my foolishness, madness, and mayhem, the Lord was saying, listen, come. Come, stop. I wouldn't listen. But you see, when I said, when I was like tired, sick and tired of the foolishness, and really was really sick and tired, I was like, Lord, I don't want to be sick and tired anymore. He was like, oh, you're ready now? I was like, yes. It, well, it wasn't like this. I was like crying with snot running out my nose. 
I'm painting a graphic picture. Yes, that's how bad it was. And he was like, okay, baby, I've, I've had you all along. See, and he pulled me up out of the miry pit. Glory to God. And he took me, rescued me out of the kingdom of darkness and placed me in the kingdom of light and the marvelous life of God. Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. Woo! That's why I praise him. I've been through some things. Ooh, I've seen. I know. I know that I know. That's why when I talk about the Lord, it is not lip service for me. It's from the heart because I know were it not for his goodness. Were it not for him. Oh my Lord. My Lord. Mm, thank you Jesus. Oh I'm out of here. Praise God. Have a blessed and wonderful day everyone. Thank you all for joining. And for those who are to come later. I pray you enjoy this message. Share it. It will be uploaded on face on YouTube. So please go. My YouTube page is Flo. F-L-O. Chang Ajita. Not Florencia. Not my full name. But so send someone there. Listen. Because we need to empower each other. And too many times, you know what the enemy of our souls will do? You know, some pe this is, a lot of people will gravitate. Some people, the groups that they gossip about people and talk about people, they will keep in contact every day, all day, on the phone, gossiping about people. If they talk to someone who's about God and say, you know, let's pray, or no, you ought not to say that, or you ought not to do that, you don't get a phone call. Or you won't call them. We've all been there. Sons and daughters of God. The enemy of our souls like to distract us. And extract us from those who, who are of the things of God. But the Bible says iron sharpened iron. Listen. The right iron will sharpen right. The wrong iron will also sharpen for the wrong thing. So, mm was a part of the message but that's the closing remark from Jesus so I pray it helps somebody to do better today to live better to walk in and receive the blessing the worst thing is when people miss out on what God has for you or what God has placed within you never comes to fruition. I pray that be not so for any of us in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. Anybody who sees or hears this video in Jesus' name, glory to God. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Thank you, Danette. Danette put it in the chat, by the way, so you can go there and you can share. Flo Chang Ajita on YouTube. Thanks, Danette. God bless you, sis. Thank you. Danette is, has been a... You know, this young lady has supported... We've come a long way. We were young people, and and she was she's younger than I am, of course, and 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 we've been there ah uh, for years. She supported me. I've supported her. We've been through some things, but God, and today we can praise God together. Today she is worshiping God for her to write this book and to be as eloquent as she has been. Let me tell you, that tells who God is and the same God who has done it for her. The same God who has done it for me. Her story. Oh my Lord. The same God will do that for you and and, and, and more in Jesus' name. Oh, oh, let me go. Oh, I have to go. Well, have a blessed and a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. I have to go assist someone with something. All right. God be praised. Blessings. Shalom.